man, I love it when beta flight rates send me a good night text. I love beta flight rates so much. They were my first and I just don't think I could ever move past beta flight rates. Always going to be my love. Love you too, beta flight rates. Good night. A text from actual rates? You up? Yeah, I guess I am. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and today I want to talk to you about rates, but not just any kind of rates, I want to get very specific about rates, but I'm not going to tell you how to change your rates to find your perfect rates, and I am intentionally saying the word rates a lot. It's probably annoying, and that is the point of me doing it, but what is not annoying are actual rates. What do I mean? What are these actual rates of which I speak? Well, if you're a fairly new pilot, you're probably very familiar with actual rates because those are the rates that are default in beta flight now, a lot of times they're just in there. However, I am not that new of a pilot. Whenever I started out, beta flight rates were in there. But why would you want to convert beta flight rates to actual rates? Well, that's what this whole video is about. I'm going to show you how to convert your beta flight rates to actual rates and why you should do that because beta flight rates are kind of weird. Each kind of rate, beta flight or actual, has three options that you manipulate to get your rate curve. However, the beta flight ones are just kind of strange unless you know what they are. And I spent a lot of time fiddling with mine to get the right curve. However, if I had just ran right into actual rates when I started, it would have made a lot more sense and I would have saved myself a ton of time. So I'm not gonna tell you today how to find your perfect rate, but I am gonna give you the tools to make it easier when you need to manipulate your rate or try something different and you wanna change from flowy freestyle to spang or you wanna go cinematic and push some things down or you wanna fly a different size of quad or maybe a different up tilt and you wanna manipulate your rates. Well, in beta flight rates, it's kind of guesswork, to be honest with you, which number you need to mess with to get the curve where you want it. And there's a couple of variations to make it happen and both ways work, but they're both different. And it's, it's just all kinds of a mess. You should be using actual rates. And in fact, I took a poll on my YouTube community page where a lot of you are using actual rates, but there were some of you out there that were beta flight rates for life. And there were a couple that responded, but who even are you anyway? I, I get you. So here are my rates in beta flight. I run 600 degrees per second, and I have come up with this mix of RC rate, rate and RC expo that worked for me to make the curve that I like. And I like a little less RC expo on my yaw. But sometimes I wanna buy a tiny whoop and I want a little bit more authority for yaw when I'm racing, because I use a lot of yaw when I race tiny whoops. I had to mess with what part of the rates I wanted to change to get my degrees per second up and mix in the expo the way I liked it, uh, just to figure that out was kind of difficult because of the way beta flight rates work. In actual, it is very simple. And let's say I want to take my rates right here and I just want to make them actual rates. Well, there's a pull down in beta flight. So why, why is that a problem? Because when you pull this down and you hit actual and you accept it, it says it's gonna change the rates back to the default curve. And if you allow it to do that, you have just lost your rates. You went back to beta flight default rates only in actual, which is not what I wanted. I wanted it to convert my rates. Well, right now it doesn't do that. It doesn't convert the rates between beta flight and actual. So today I'm gonna show you a tool that does with a little bit of manual manipulation. And then from now on, you can use actual rates. And I'm also gonna tell you why you should use actual rates by covering what all the bits and pieces of them are. But first, I just wanna do a quick 90 second recap of the way beta flight and actual rates work, break down the components of them so that you understand what we're working with here. And then I'll show you the tool that you need to use to convert it. And uh, yeah, prosper because actual rates are where it's at. In fact, even if you do not know who I am, according to the poll, I don't know why I'd expect you to in the first place. So there are three components of beta flight rates that we see in the rates tab of beta flight. The first one obviously is RC rate. Then we just see rate and then we see expo. But what do these three things mean? Well, the RC rate actually manipulates the degrees per second at the ends here. And it does that as you increase it by either moving the line up or down at both ends equally. So 
it doesn't change the midpoint, it just changes the angle of the rate line. Rate is not actually rate. Rate is a thing called super rate. It is actually an algorithmic rate that manipulates a couple of things at once. So we're gonna leave that one alone for a second and we're gonna jump straight onto Expo because it's a little bit more clear and we'll jump back into rate here in a minute after you understand the Expo concept. So Expo changes the exponential curve of the rate. So we start out with a line that is zero Expo. Zero Expo for this straight line here. As we increase the Expo, the line gets more flat toward the center and more curved at the edges, but it does not change the endpoints of the line. It just changes the middle flatness. Essentially, it gives you more squishiness toward the middle, a little bit more room for error, a little less speed in the roll, pitch, and yaw axis commands. So it allows you to have smooth movements in the middle. Probably already knew that one, right? Well, let's look at super rate because it's a weird dude. So if we assume this is our rate curve in Betaflight just with regular RC rate and no expo at all, so a straight line that ends in whatever degrees per second we want it to based on what Betaflight is telling us from our RC rate, the rate number in the middle there actually adds expo and rate. So where expo just flattens the line out a little bit, but it ends at the same ends here, that's normal expo added to an RC rate. What happens when you mess with rate, the one in the middle there, is that it actually adds expo and end. So you may have a line that ends out here when you add rate. It adds more degrees per second toward the end as well as additional expo. But why is this even a problem? Uh, it works, right? I understand what rate does in RC rate and expo. I can manipulate those numbers and get where I wanna be. And you're right, you can. But the real issue is that if you look at my rates here, nothing here says 600 degrees per second except the end. All I know is I'm 0.05 over a baseline on my RC rate. I am 0.35 under a baseline on rate and I am adding a 0.2 expo. Nothing makes reference to the degrees per second at all with beta flight rates. And when I know that I want to change my rate for something, I don't think, oh, I want to add 0.05 of RC rate to my rates and see how that feels. No, I know I want to add 50 degrees per second and I want a specific center stick feel with that additional 50 degrees per second. That's what I know, but none of that is translated into how beta flight rates work at the surface level. I'm sure there are some people out there who have a complete understanding of this and they can just think in those numbers, but most pilots are not those people. So this is where actual rates come in because the whole thing talks in degrees per second, which is a complete thing we can understand right off the bat. We understand rolling a certain amount of degrees per second or yawing or flipping a certain amount of degrees per second. So let me show you what the components of actual rates are, and maybe this will click for you as to why you really should be using them. So in actual rates, we have center sensitivity, max rate, expo, and max velocity. You'll notice the max velocity looks like max rate. That's really easy to determine. If I know I wanna go up in my maximum amount of roll or pitch or yaw by 50 degrees, I know exactly where to sit that. That makes a lot of sense. So let's break down those little components real quick, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the conversions so that you don't lose all your hard work running beta flight rates when you wanna start running actual ones. So the components of actual rates, my handwriting is atrocious, I know. Welcome to my handwriting. It's always been terrible. Our center sensitivity, max rate, and expo. Really easy concepts here. Center sensitivity essentially just relates to how you want the center stick to feel, how squishy do you want it to be. The number in there is really just a relative, uh, a relative percentage of how long the flat line goes at the center of the stick. So it makes that kind of whip out when we're talking about expos. So how soft do you want your center stick? The max rate sets the actual max rate in degrees per second of that axis. Really, really simple, right? And the Expo does exactly what it does in beta flight rates. It just makes the curve more pronounced. It works with the center sensitivity to pronounce that curve. I don't even need to draw diagrams for that. That is super simple. 
That's why you should be using actual rates instead of beta flight rates. Because when you want to manipulate them, you don't have to think hard about how to manipulate them or fiddle with it until it looks right to you. That is just a terrible way of doing things. And moving forward in quads, I really think we're going to see beta flight rates go to the wayside because new pilots don't understand what those numbers are. And a lot of people do run just the beta flight default rates, and that's perfectly fine. But when they want to find their own rate, they can think in degrees per second. They can't think in RC rate, rate and expo numbers that mean nothing to them out of the box. They can think in center sensitivity because that makes sense. Maximum rotation, maximum rate and expo. Very easy concepts. And if you're using beta flight rates today, you really should convert to actual rates so that when you want to manipulate them, you get a little bit more ease of control in that manipulation. You know, you want to go faster at full stick, but you want to retain your sensitivity at middle stick. Really easy to manipulate these numbers. So let me show you the tool to transfer them into actual rates. If you're currently using beta flight rates, like I have been, I'm guilty of this. I converted mine as well. And we're going to use my rates to convert. So maybe you want to try my actual rates when we're done. Let's go check the tool out. And to do this conversion, we're gonna be using this Desmos plotting tool. And I will put a link to this in the description, so don't worry about the incredibly long URL at the top and having to type all that out. Just click the link in the description because it is much simpler. So you'll see here we have a spot for our Betaflight RC rate, Betaflight Super rate, or just rate, and Betaflight Expo. And then we have sliders for our actual rates. We'll get there in a minute. But the first thing we wanna do is input our Betaflight rate. So the Betaflight rate for me is 1.05. 0.65 Boop. sliders are finicky and then the expo i have at 0.2 on my roll and my pitch okay so i have my beta flight rate and we see the curves over here now the red line represents the beta flight rate the blue line represents the actual rate the same thing down here with these dotted lines the red line represents the overall beta flight rate and the blue line represents the overall actual rate now what does any of that mean Let's go mess with these actual rate sliders. So if I mess with sensor, center sensitivity, you see how the dotted line kind of moves? Well, the goal is I want to find a number that makes the red dotted line set on the blue one, like that. So that means my center sensitivity for this axis is 170. Then my max rate here, I know I want it to be 600 degrees per second because that's what my beta flight rates end at. Then all we have to do is manipulate the expo slider until I get it where I like it, which is basically just setting this red line on top of the blue line. It looks like mine comes out to 0.6. That's all there is to converting your beta flight rates to actual rates. So now I know that when I want to put in my roll and my pitch for my actual rates inside of beta flight, I put 170, 600, 0.6. 170 for my center sensitivity, 600 for my max degrees per second and 0.6 for my expo. Now, if you'll notice on my beta flight rates, I do not use any expo on yaw. So that means I'm going to have a different actual rate for my yaw. So let's go back here and find my yaw rate. My yaw rate still for RC rate is 1.05. For the super rate or just rate, it's 0.65. But I have zero expo added to my beta flight rate for yaw. So you'll see how that changes my line fairly significantly. And the dotted lines no longer line up either. So to line up the dotted lines, I wanna mess with my center rate. And to do that, I'm gonna bring it up. And it looks like my center rate for yaw is 210 because the dotted lines line up now. Then I know that my max rate is still 600 because the lines end in the same place over here. And in beta flight, my yaw rate is 600 degrees per second, just like my roll and my pitch. The only thing that changed was expo. So now to make the expo work, I just manipulate this slider and I happen to know what mine is. It is 0.48. So my yaw in actual is 210 for center, 600 for max, 0.48 for expo. Now I know that if I wanted to go out in the field and I felt like I wanted snappier rolls and, and flips, I could go to 650 for the max rate. And then my center sensitivity is gonna basically stay the same and it's just gonna move my expo out a little further to the edges. So I still get about the same middle stick feel, I just get more at the ends. Now, if I want a little bit more twitchiness, say I'm racing, but I don't need the whole, I don't need 700 degrees per second on the end, I can still run with 600. All I do is mess with my center sensitivity a little bit. I kick that number up and I get a little less squishy middle. 
Very simple to manipulate for different scenarios. Most people find rates and then they just fly them the same on everything and they don't manipulate their rates based on what they're doing with the quad. Cause it's just too difficult to do with beta flight rates. But actual rates let you do that very, very easily because the components of actual rates are much easier to understand. And that's my whole spiel as to why you should be using the darn things. Because I use them, if nothing else. Come on, if Bacon uses them, it's gotta be good enough for anybody, right? Because basically I am anybody when it comes to FPV. <laughs> There's nothing special about me. I am anybody. If I like them better, then you might like them better too, and I recommend you give them a try. Now, if you would please leave me a comment below about your experience with actual rates or beta flight rates and what your rates are. I'd love to know what your rates are. I always find it very interesting to see what rates other pilots fly. And if you wanna try mine, I'll put them in the video description below. If you didn't catch them during the video, maybe you wanna try my rates and see if you can do my flippity flops and my weird mix of uh, weird spang. It's not really spang. I don't know what to call it. Sometimes I call it uh, spang light. It's, it's like spang light. It's like diet spang. I do a diet spang. If you want to try my diet spang and you uh, want to, that sounds so wrong, by the way. I should not have said diet spang so quickly. But back to the main point. If you want to try my rates, feel welcome to try them. I will put them in the description below. Leave me a comment with yours. I'd love to know what you're flying. If this has been helpful, give this video a like. Please subscribe if you haven't. I'd appreciate having you. And if today isn't your day, then that's fine too. I totally understand I'm a, I'm a freaking weirdo and not subscribing to me might be the best decision you've ever made. It's up to you completely. But until next time, that's all I have for today. Stay greasy and I'll catch you later. Did you know that I have a Patreon? Well, if not, you're about to find out in a really terrible way because now it's time to pay back the people who give me support on Patreon by embarrassing them with a Photoshop of their account names on top of bacon in a really weird scene. And then I say them all in a really weird way, but that's what they get for supporting a weirdo like me. I mean, come on, what do you expect? When you support a weirdo, you expect weird back. So here's what they deserve. Oh, FPV, free range chicken RC, crash and burn FPV, Dylan H, TS13 FPV, Chow FPV, Logan R, Sweet Willie. But seriously, as always, I really do appreciate all of those names that I just read. And if you're not a current Patreon supporter and you want to be, feel free to go to my Patreon. And then next week, we might see your name on some bacon. Who knows? You can join the weird crew of people that support a weirdo like me and feel like the weirdest part of the internet is a piece of your life, if that's what you're willing to give money for. But really, thank you all very much for your support. I could not do what I do with this channel without you. It really doesn't make any money and it never is going to. So this is all just things that interest me. And I could not make the videos about things that interest me if it weren't for your support because it is just far too expensive to go alone. Anyway, now I'm actually done. My, that's my whole spiel. You know I have a Patreon and I have embarrassed those who pay me. Deal done. Stay greasy. I'll catch you later.